How's it going, people? Blackthorn. And this is a fermented cider. And I haven't had this in a long time. Uh, a hard cider. Yeah, I'm a little bummed out. I've already done this chapter. I've done three videos. I uploaded two of them and I had to take them right back down. YouTube notified me that you know, I was playing the soundtrack to Twin Peaks and they told me it belongs to somebody else and no action was to be taken just yet. Well, I'm new enough at this. I just took the videos down. And I'm going to do them again. Acapella. <laughs> uh, it's too bad. They were perfect. And I love the soundtrack to Twin Peaks. I don't know. Maybe I... Maybe I can write a letter or something and say, Please, please, please let me... Let me... Uh, read the Book of Mormon while getting drunk and reading... And listening to your wonderful music. Think that'll go over? <laughs> All right, well, to make the matters worse, uh, Chapter 11 doesn't have any drinks. So I'm just going to drink because uh, I need to. All right, let's start with the masthead here. Chapter 11, Judges and Their Compensation. Because you got to pay these judges. Nephite coins and measures. It's about fucking time. I mean, <laughs> you waited a little while. And where are all, the, all these coins? How come we're not finding a single one? Zizram confounded by Amulak. We're all confounded. <laughs> confounded. Hard cider. Ooh. That's nice. Yeah, I was drinking um, a um, oh, beer called simpler times. I think I got one left. And it had a cider-like taste, and it just put me in mind of doing this. You know, just go get a hard cider. One. Now, it was in the law of Mosiah that every man who was a judge of the law, or those who were appointed uh, to be judges, should receive wages according to the time which they labored to judge those who were brought before them to be judged. Two. Mm. Nice and crisp. Like biting into a, an apple. Getting a head change. Didn't that happen once? Although, why they would eat an apple and then go to a fig tree to get clothes, you know. Yeah. Maybe it was a fig. Maybe it's all just make-believe. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Two. Now, if a man owed another, and he would not pay that which he did owe, he was complained of to the judge, and the judge executed authority and sent forth officers that the man should be brought before him. And he judged the man according to the law and the evidences which were brought against him. And thus the man was compelled to pay that which he owed. Or be stripped. Or be cast out out from among the people as a thief and a robber. Long verses so far. Three. And the judge received for his wages, according to the time, a senine of gold for a day. A senine? What's a senine? Maybe they'll tell us. Finally. <laughs> uh, or a senum of silver. 
So you get a C9 of gold for a day or a C num of silver, which is equal to a C9 of gold. And this is according to law, which was given. Four. Now, these are the names of the different pieces of their gold and of their silver according to their value. And the names are given by the Nephites, for they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem, neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews. But they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and the circumstances of the people in every generation until the reign of the judges, they having been established by King Mosiah. That's a little fishy. I mean, why would they change their measures and their I mean, why? <laughs> if it worked for him, unless it never worked good. <sighs> Five. Now, the reckoning is thus. A senine of gold, a seon of gold, a shun of gold, and a limna, limna of gold. Six. A senum of silver, an amnor of silver, an Ezram of silver and an Antai of silver. Seven. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, as you already established. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. And either for a measure of barley. So you can get a measure of barley. For a C9 or a C num. Whatever that means. It's something to do with weights and all, I guess, but they're not explaining it very well. So why are they trying at all? <laughs> oh, that's right. They they forgot to foreshadow and now they're mentioning money. Yeah. Eight. Now the amount of a Sion of gold was twice the value of a C9. A Sion. And a Shun of gold was twice the value of a Sion. Ten. And a Limna of gold was the value of them all. Eleven. And an Amner of silver was as great as two Senums. Twelve. And an Ezram of silver was as great as four senums. <laughs> Thirteen. And an Antai was as great as them all. It's like they're playing a paper, rock, scissors or some stupid shit. What the fuck? <laughs> we need a chart, I think. <laughs> Maybe there's one in this book. Uh, oh, I didn't look. At, I didn't see it. Maybe I'll make one up. 14. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. 15. A sheblon is half of a senum. Therefore, a shamblon for half a measure of barley. <laughs> Which they're for some reason growing in a new world. And then it went extinct and the Europeans had to bring it here all over again. 16. And a shiblum is half of a shiblon. 17. And a li is the half of a shiblum. 18. And this is their number according to their reckoning. 19. Now an an antion of gold is equal to three shiblons. <laughs>
Damn, that's mighty refreshing. 20. Now, it was for the sole purpose to get gain. Oh, we're back to the lawyers. I mean the judges, excuse me. <sighs> now that we've explained their currency. 20. Now, it was for the sole purpose to get gain because they received their wages according to their employ. Therefore, they did stir up the people to rioting and all manner of disturbances and wickedness and that they might have more employ, those freaking judges. Yeah, that was a great idea, Mosiah. Pansy. <laughs> I'm sorry, what an insult to flowers. <sighs> Wickedness, that they might have more employ, that they might get money according to the suits, suits which were brought before them. Therefore, they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. 21. Wow, that works. Ooh. <laughs> 21. Let's have a little more. Oh, this is a lot easier to pour. No technique required. Twenty-one, and this Zizram, <laughs> Zizram, began to answer Amulak, saying, "Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you?" That's wow, efficient. Now Zizram was a man who was expert in the devices of the devil and overwriting and running on and on, waxing poetic and all, which I'll stop. <laughs> devices of the devil that he might destroy that which is good. He's rather two-dimensional. He's not even two. He's just one-dimensional. He just twisting his mustache and cackling and tying your girlfriend to the train tracks <laughs> or foreclosing on your on a widow's house and all that shit. <sighs> it's about as old as the uh is <laughs> is uh the parables. <laughs> oh that's right, this is supposed to be that old too. Older even. Alright. Yeah. Device of the devil that he might destroy that which is good. Therefore, he said unto Amulek, Amulek, will ye answer the questions which I shall put unto you? <laughs> He's already had two questions. <laughs> Just ask a question, you dickhead. Don't you people hate when somebody asks you if they can ask a question when they could have just asked the question and dealt with the consequences? <laughs> Probably an honest answer. <sighs> 22. And Amulek said unto him, Yea, uh, if it be according to the Spirit of the Lord which is in me, for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. <sighs> and Zizram said unto him, All right, here's his question. That he wants to ask. Behold, here are six on ties of silver, and all these will I give thee if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. That's not a question at all. And it's stupid. Who gives a fuck what he thinks? I'll keep my money. 
even if I'm a zillionaire, I would never do a thing like that. Because that's a bunch of bullshit. I don't give a shit if people believe silly stuff. I don't mind. So long as they don't mind me chuckling a little bit sometimes. And maybe even making fun of them. They're free to come back at me. This is an open channel. <sighs> Just don't be, you know, clogging shit up with a bunch of stupid shit. But, say what you want. Even if it ain't nice. <sighs> yeah, he's gonna bribe this guy to deny God. 23. Now, Amulek said, O oh, thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? 24. Believest thou that there is no God? I say unto you, nay. I say unto you, not ye. Nay, uh, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. If they capitalized, you know, the possessive pronoun there, uh, I would know it's a royal he. Or a divine one. Same thing to some folks. 25. And now, thou hast lied before God unto me. Thou saidest unto me, behold, these six on ties. Boy, now that we've got it out there, uh, we're going to use the shit out of this currency. Why did they think they needed to tell us what the currency was? Why are they always writing for the future, you know? That'll come after they're wiped out, but hopefully that won't happen. That reminds me of the the Apocrypha of Mary, you know? J.C. meets the, the thieves, they rob him, realize it's J.C., and go, ah! And, and then later on he tells his mom, because J.C. can talk as an infant in uh, the Apocrypha and the Koran. Uh... <sighs> Um, yeah, he recognizes them as the thieves, and he tells his mom, and she goes, Pray forbid that should be thy fate, and that's it, or thy lot. And it's like, wow, that's a real emotional reaction there. <sighs> 25. And now thou hast lied before God and me. Thou saidest unto me, Behold, these six ontis, which are of great worth, I will give unto thee. When thou hadst in thy heart to retain them from me. See, he knew he wasn't going to get paid. He knew that, you know. Zizram was a jet bag. He's an Indian giver. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Then, wait, when thou hadst in thy heart to retain them from me, and it was only thy desire that I should deny the true and living God that thou mightest have caused to destroy me. And now, behold, this... For this great evil, thou shalt have thy reward. Oh, that's right. Jesus always, they have their reward. And he knew exactly what he meant. <laughs> There's your reward. There's your fucking reward. Spin on it. Like I said, no drinks in this one. I gotta read it straight. Damn it. Uh, 26. And... Zizram said unto him, Thou sayest, There is a true and living God. 27. And Amulek said, Yea, there is a true and living God. 28. Now Zizram said, Is there more than one God? Good question. 29. And he answered, No. He didn't say nay. He said no. 
That reminds me. This is kind of nice. 30. Now Zizram said unto him again, How knowest thou these things? 31. And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. Yeah, because <laughs> Alma Jr. is like, God, he's even worse than Paul. I mean, no, he's about as bad, I guess. I mean, neither one deserved to get called, but I guess, you know, that whole thing doesn't make sense anyway. I need to explain to me. Open channel, open comments, open responses. Ah, 27. And Amalek said, Yea, there is a true and living God. 28. Now Zizram said, Is there more than one God? 29. And he answered, No. 30. Now Zizram said unto him again, How knowest these things? 31. And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. And Zizram said again, Who is he that shall come? Is he the Son of God? I shouldn't be doing this. I'm probably creating Mormons right now. What a horrifying thought. I didn't mean it. <laughs> God. I could be turning people into Mormons. Oh, well. No need to thank me. 33. And he said unto him, Yea, it is the Son of God who's coming. And how interesting that, you know, it's in every other mythology, and now it's in reality, the reality of all this shit. Everything else is mythology, by the way. Everything else, except this and, uh, and that. At least this is better written. I gotta say, this is one of the better written holy books, and it's kind of fun sometimes. This one is sometimes fun, but only accidentally. <laughs> 34. And Zizram said again, Shall he save his people in their sins? And Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you... <laughs> that kills me every time. He said unto him, I say unto you. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's not really. It's terrible. I love trashy, campy, crazy shit. That's accidentally brilliant or funny. Especially accidentally funny. Ah. Oh. I guess a little bit more. <coughs> Very nice. A plus. Oops. Nice and absorbent, this book. I might need to buy a new one. <laughs> might not make it. It's starting to fall apart on me again. Keep patching together and giving it another coat of gold. <laughs> and Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you... There it is. He shall not Just save his people in their sins. He shall not. 
for it is impossible for him to deny his word. 35. <laughs> now Zeezrom said unto the people, See that ye remember ye. We're back to ye again. Starting to... <laughs> He's trying real hard to sound antique, but it, every once in a while he just sort of loses it and gets all modern. <laughs> I mean, Mark Twain summed it up in Roughing It. If you haven't read Roughing It, I mean, definitely read all the parts about the Mormons. It's fucking hilarious. He passed through Salt Lake City. They gave him a Book of Mormon. He read it. And he devoted a whole chapter to Roughing It. I did a two-part series. Link below. Actually, I think I got it out to four parts because I added a couple more things that he said in his appendixes. Uh, 35. Now Zizram said unto the people, See that ye remember these things. For he said that there is but one God. Yet he saith that the Son of God shall come. But he shall not save his people, uh, as though he had authority to command God. So we're back to the old God, default. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have authority because he hasn't been born yet. And he really gets total authority after he croaks and resurrects and, well, sometime he's supposed to show up. But I think we got another thousand years, personally. I've been told that I don't understand the context and you're probably Chime in any time. <sighs> 36. Now Amulek <laughs> said unto him, Behold, thou hast lied. For thou sayest that I spake as though I had authority to command God. Because I said he shall not save his people in their sins. 37. And I say unto you again that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. And he hath said that no one clean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. Makes sense, I guess. To him, anyway. Uh, 38. Now, Zizram said again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? Is the Son his own daddy? What the fuck is going on? Is heaven under new management? The kid taking over the family business? It's weird. I mean, a sadist being replaced by a masochist. I don't know, man. That's weird. <laughs> Even for me, that's fucking weird. All right. Thirty-seven. And I say unto you... Again, that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word, and he hath said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. 38. Now Zizram said again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? 39. And Amulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. <laughs> he's, he's the God of vast infinities and this little teeny speck that's barely a speck. It's... It's... Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, 
heaven and earth. And all things which are in, which, which in them are. <laughs> he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Forty. And he shall come into the world about B.C. 82, or I should say B.C.E., but I'm quoting them. And 40, and he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name. So they're on like a, they're on the waiting list, man. They, they got early reservations. Oh boy. Heaven's going to be a real family home evening. <sighs> Hope you like board games. Uh, transgressions of those who believe in his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. None else. None else. <laughs> 41. Therefore, the wicked remain as though they had been there had been no redemption made except it be the loosing of the bands of death. For behold, the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead and stand before God and be judged according to their works. Really? If that's all there is to it, I mean, there's going to be a lot of atheists in heaven. At least a lot of humanists. <laughs> 42. Now, there is a death which is a temporal death. And the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death. So hurry up and die. that all shall be raised from this temporal death. 43. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. So, if you had a perfect state, or the most, the most ideal, if you never did, I don't know, maybe they'll make you better, I don't know. <sighs> Intelligent design, my ass. Uh, restored to its proper frame. There we go. You'll be perfect. Even as we now are at this time, and we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. 44. Now, this Restoration shall come to all, <coughs> both old and young. You know, he could have stopped at all, but okay. Uh, both old and young, both bond and free, slave and unslave, both male and female, both wicked and righteous, and even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost. Wait a minute. I mean, from the very beginning of your life? 
to the end. I mean, I don't think there'll be enough head to hang all that hair on. And trust me, I mean, I, I've lost quite a bit, man. <laughs> I don't give a damn, but, you know, <laughs> I think it's distracting. All right. Perfect frame as it is now in the body and shall be brought and arranged before the bar of the, of Christ the Son and God the Father. Anyway, you're going to be totally perfect and then you're in deep shit, probably everybody. For many will be called, but few chosen. I don't think they quote that part in here. I mean, they rip off a lot of shit, but they, don't, they rip that one off. Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Well, how about that? You know, the Bible is kind of unclear about that Holy the Trinity. I think there's a couple of species, a uh, little blurbs that could be. I mean, they kind of are Trinity shit, I guess, but bang! This one nails it. I mean, the prophecies are amazing, except for that part about Jesus being born in Nazareth. Oh, and also that part about Jesus being born in Jerusalem. See, I, I did that earlier. Check it out if you missed it. I forgot which chapter, but it was a couple back. Or maybe the last one. <laughs> it's so fucking forgettable. Sorry. That's why I'm recording this. I'll never remember it. <laughs> and the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God. I'd be terrified to meet somebody that was three people in one. You know, because it sounds to me like a making of a good horror movie. I mean, my apology to people with, you know, that disorder. I've read, like, you know, The Minds of Billy Milligan and Sybil. And so, I mean, I definitely sympathetic. Uh, to be judged according to their works. There we go again. See? Their works. Whether they be good or whether they be evil. Wow. There's a lot of good people out there that don't believe your shit. Ugh. I like to think I'm one of them. 45. Now, behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body. They're, they're still, like, preaching this shit to this, uh... Oh, fuck, I forgot where, where they're at. <laughs> the, uh... Hard-to-pronounce place, which I talked about earlier. Sorry, I think I'm a little tipsy. Uh... The death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. Ew. Is that necessary? I mean, if I got a soul, do I really want this carcass reattached to it? <laughs> By the way, I don't believe I do have a soul, and I don't think anyone ever did. Sorry. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immortal body. <laughs> Yay. That is from death, even from the first death unto life. That ye, they can die no more. Ah. Oh. That's so nice. They can die no more. You can rest easy. You're not going to die no more. You know, that would be a great name for a punk rock band. Die no more. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Their spirits uniting with their bodies. Ooh. Never to be divided. Thus, the whole becoming spiritual and immortal. 
that they can no more see corruption. That's nice. Good. Good, good, good. <laughs> We're almost done, trust me. <sighs> ah. Ah, there we go. 46. Now, when Amulek had finished these words, the people began again to be astonished. They did. <sighs> and also, Zizram began to tremble. <laughs> <laughs> and thus ended the words of Amulek, or this is all that I have written. That, that must be Alpha Jr. <laughs> More space for him on the plates. That's the end of chapter 11 of Alma. I'll see you guys in chapter 12. Like I said, uh... This is going to take a while. There's like almost 300 chapters in this book. Almost. Fun. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you might be having.